Hi students, welcome back to part two of the lecture on specific defenses of the immune system. Next in uh, your note should be a bullet point that says um, mechanisms of the immune response. And what we're talking about here is where do B cells and T cells come from? Well, both originate from stem cells in the bone marrow. Uh, embryonic stem cells. Uh, stem cells are cells that have the ability to differentiate into different cell types as they mature. Some of these embryonic blood cells will move into the bloodstream, spend some time there, be processed, and when they're mature, they're going to be called B cells. Others will migrate to a gland called the thymus. They will undergo some uh, processing and differentiation there, and when they mature, they will also enter the bloodstream and the lymph system, and they'll be called T cells. A few facts about B cells. Uh, this is kind of a bullet list that you'll find in your lecture outline. Uh, first of all, B cells may have up to 100,000 antibody molecules, and this is on the surface of one cell, and these molecules are going to act as antigen receptors. Uh, once B cells are activated, that means stimulated by an antigen, they're going to undergo what's called clonal selection. They'll undergo a, a number of uh, cycles of cell division, and we'll see two main populations emerge. One population is referred to as the memory B cell. These are the cells that will protect us against a subsequent uh, reinfection with the same antigen. And then the other B cells will, uh, once they're stimulated by antigen, they're going to differentiate and develop into what are known as plasma cells. Those plasma cells, also called effector B cells, are the cells that are going to produce antibody molecules and secrete them into the uh, bloodstream. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our attention to T cells and cell-mediated immunity. All right, I've already mentioned that T cells are processed in the thymus and they migrate to the bloodstream and the lymph system. Uh, they also, when stimulated by antigen, will form two populations, uh, two main populations. I'll talk about some subpopulations in just a moment. Uh, but we have memory T cells and effector T cells. And T cells are going to be most effective against helping to protect us against um, cancerous cells, so our own cells that are behaving in an abnormal manner. They also help to protect us against antigen that has uh, actually infected our cells. Um, antibody molecules are going to be more effective against antigens that are in the bloodstream, but T cells can help um, either in the bloodstream or in other other tissues of the body, but as I said, they're very effective at identifying either cancerous cells or our cells that have been invaded by either a bacterium or a virus. All right, let's talk about the four types of effector T cells. First on my list are what are known as uh, T cytotoxic cells, also referred to as CD8 positive T cells, and this is a reference to a, a particular marker on the surface of these cells. It uh, helps to identify the, the different populations. Now, these um, uh, cytotoxic T cells, they are uh, precursors to what we call cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and uh, we've got a very complex process that's going to result in their production. I've uh, posted a couple of videos for you to look to see how that happens, uh, but um, it's going to involve um, antigen processing by a dendritic cell, and uh, then some interaction with the T cell. Um, and um, at this point, the cytotoxic T cell will be able to identify uh, cells containing that antigen and destroy them. Uh, what these cytotoxic T cells are going to do is they will attach to the target cell, that's the cell that we're trying to eliminate, and they release pore forming proteins called perforins. So literally what they're going to do is uh, poke holes in the infected cells uh, to kill it. And uh, just once again to reiterate, this type of T cell helps protect us against cancer. Uh, transplanted tissue, like an organ transplant for example, uh, intracellular bacteria and viruses, and possibly a number of eukaryotic parasites as well. Okay, um, I'm on number two, and we're looking at helper T cells, also known as CD4 positive cells. Now, these cells recognize antigen on the surface of macrophages, and they will, um, these helper T cells will assist in activating the macrophages. Now, when um, a CD, uh, CD4 positive T cell is activated, it's going to go through 
two to three uh, cycles of replication daily and the newly formed cells are going to release uh, protein molecules called cytokines and these cytokines assist in a number of their functions um, and we're going to see two populations of cells arise from this process so I'm talking about helper T cells um, undergoing some further development and forming two new subpopulations one population is called T helper 1 cells and some of their functions include activation of macrophages, uh, also activation of cytotoxic T cells that we spoke about just a moment ago, and also activation of another type of phagocytic cell in our immune system referred to as natural killer cells. Now the second subpopulation of helper T cells, they're called Th2 cells. They produce some other cytokines um, and they assist in the production of the antibody process. They help to stimulate uh, B cells to become plasma cells and secrete antibody molecules. Um, and also um, help to activate uh, eosinophils that are going to be called into action in eukaryotic infections, like for example, infections with protozoans or, or the helminths. Uh, another note about the um, Th2 cells is that when an individual is given a skin test to screen for tuberculosis, if they have a positive reaction, I think you guys will recall that that test involved injecting a substance called PPD um, under the upper layers of the skin and then you come back uh, 48 to 72 hours later to have the injection site examined. And if that injection site is um, swollen or uh, red or raised, uh, then that means that the individual has either been exposed to tuberculosis or they have an active case or possibly they've been vaccinated. But in any event, it's these Th2 cells that would be involved in a positive reaction to a tuberculosis skin test. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Um, okay, so we've covered three of the four types of T cells. The fourth type are called T regulatory cells. They were formerly referred to as T suppressor cells. I think either name is good, but I guess regulatory is perhaps more descriptive of their function. Uh, their main function is to combat autoimmune diseases by suppressing T cells that aren't uh, deleted by the thymus because that's what will happen with T cells once they've um, uh, exhausted their useful lifespan. Uh, and uh, they may also help to prevent the fetus from being rejected by its mom in, in the course of the pregnancy. All right, guys, that wraps it up, and I hope this uh, is helpful to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you in class soon. Thanks very much.